Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Heartland Church and our midweek service. Grateful to be here with you guys on Facebook. And uh, we're going to have a great time singing praises to God tonight. And we've got a lesson coming up from Josh Werner in a few minutes. So we're going to jump right in with You're the One. Lord, the people praise you. Lord, the people praise you. Lift you up and raise you. Lift you up and raise you. Oh, you are the Holy One. Nobody above you. Praise nobody above you. Oh, you are the Holy One. You are the Holy One. You're the one, you're the only one. You're the one, you're the only one. And we're singing Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. All the glory is due you. All the glory is due you. Oh, you are the Holy One. You are the Holy One. You're the one, you're the only one. You're the one, you're the only one. Bless your name. Lord Jesus, your name, Lord Jesus, only name that frees us. tonight. We're so grateful, again, for technology. Um, we're just in different times right now, and we can't wait for the day where we can all be together again, singing together, rejoicing God together. Um, but right now, we're singing and rejoicing through Facebook. So uh, we're really grateful, though, just to be able to come together like this. And um, I've enjoyed the time where we've had our Zoom calls and been able to see each other. Um, and again, we are just looking forward to being all together again one day soon, hopefully. Amen. Just getting uh, situated here, and then we will jump into another song. We're going to do Sing Hallelujah to the Lord. This is one of my all-time favorites. Um, it's just so peaceful and uh, just help us, helps to focus us back on what really matters. Sing Hallelujah. 
great song, and uh, we're going to sing another great song here. This is called Holy, Holy, Holy. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning, our song shall rise. Holy, holy. 
rest eternally. Amen. Now Josh Werner has a lesson for us tonight. Amen. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, Glad to have this opportunity to share with you guys, and I think that this mic is really loud, and so Carlos is going to fix that. Uh, you know, I do want to give a brief shout out before I start uh, to a few of the be behind the scenes people uh, that are actually making a lot of headway, making a lot of this stuff work, uh, because, you know, it's really difficult to kind of pick this stuff up from knowing basically nothing to, uh, about how to stream and how to... Uh, produce stuff live in this fashion and uh, you know I think two people that have been working super hard uh, behind the scenes uh, basically twice a week uh, every week are, are Carlos Chavez Carlito uh, as many of you know him and then Brandon Miller uh, has been uh, just yeah. integral both of them in in making this stuff a success it would not be uh, as good as it is uh, and it might not even be at all uh, without those two uh, guys helping so other people have helped and we appreciate all of you guys as well uh, but those two especially really just uh, kind of grind it out uh, to really help out so I appreciate them so much we at Heartland Church really appreciate their assistance in that and I wanted to give them uh, a brief shout out before I start um, but I, I'm just glad to be able to share with you guys this evening, uh, this, this Wednesday night, and I'm so excited to be able to share, because I think um, what we're going to talk about here, uh, spoiler, is compassion. Uh, and I think no matter where you're at, whether you have just been having the best uh, day or the best week or the best month or year or forever, probably not the best year. Uh, a lot of people uh, largely think that 2020 kind of is one of those kind of like, oh, maybe we'll just forget 2020 ever happened. But um, maybe you're also uh, on that end where, where you've just been having a rough day, uh, a rough hour. It feels like uh, even for me, just uh, exacerbated by quarantine in this fashion that my mood, uh, how my day is going can change by the minute, uh, by the hour, by the day. Uh, maybe you hear some news or see some news on uh, online that, that's just something so terrible or or just something happened to you in your day that whatever maybe you woke up on the wrong side of the day uh, on the bed today whatever it might be for you no matter where you're at this lesson what we're going to be talking about uh, is going to be so helpful uh, it's going to offer us perspective uh, remind us of what God is like of who he is and how filled with compassion God truly is, and I think it'll also be a call for us to really live out uh, that compassion, that love uh, that God really has exhibited and continues to, to exhibit, to demonstrate to you and me. Uh, so turn with me to Luke chapter 7. Uh, we are going to start in verse 11, but I, I really love this story, and this is one that, honestly, uh, the first Man, several times that I've read this story, I've read through the Bible a few times, and, and this story did not really stick out to me. Uh, it's just one of those that you kind of read and it just passes you by. But uh, it was actually brought up, this story, uh, by my wife, and she was like, man, this story is so cool. And she just shared what she really loved about this. And, and, and it started to stick with me about that this story really is special. Uh, in the Bible. And, and so we're going to look at this story. It might be one that's familiar to you, or you might just think, oh, that's another story of Jesus healing somebody. But I think that when we hone in on, he, uh, on something in this story, it's going to be really special. Uh, so picking up in verse 11, it says, soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, don't cry. Then he went up and touched the bier they were carrying him on, and the bearers stood still. He said, young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. They were all filled with awe and praised God. A great prophet has appeared among us. They said, God has come to help his people. 
This news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. What an incredible story. And I think it's all too often we just pass right by these stories of Jesus doing something incredible. He actually raised a man from the dead in this story, right? How many times have you seen that in your life? How many times have you watched somebody just kind of, you know, stop somebody who's dead uh, and being carried off and say, hey, get up, come on, uh, it's time to be back alive? Probably never. Uh, I certainly have never seen that, but it's something in the Bible that we can just take for granted. But this is an incredible act by Jesus. He, he literally brings this man from death to life. What an incredible moment. And of course, Jesus does the same for all of us. That we are dead in our sins, that we are dead uh, to, our, to our sins, to our transgressions. And, and he has given us the ability to be out of all that. Uh, you know, we saw that uh, presumably, we're pre-recording this, but uh, we saw that this past Saturday uh, with a baptism, somebody being brought from death to life. And that's an incredible, incredible mystery uh, that, that is truly awesome and something that we should never take for granted. But I want to look at the detail in this story that, that kind of strikes me as it being different than most of the other stories. And that's that this is not a story of somebody coming to Jesus, but a story of Jesus coming to someone. Uh, most all other stories, you have a crowd surrounding Jesus and somebody busts out of the crowd to do something, uh, to get to Jesus, to just touch his cloak, or, or they send a servant to say, oh, my friend is, is sick, is dying, this is happening, uh, my child, I need your help, Jesus, and then Jesus says, by your faith, they are healed, right? Or maybe somebody busts through a roof to talk to Jesus. All incredible stories of people seeking out Jesus. But this story, nobody sought Jesus. Uh, that, that actually got healed here, right? The, the woman was mourning, uh, the widow mourning for her only son. Uh, and that was more than just a family member, right? I, and I'm sure there's incredible emotional attachment there, right? A mother to a son, uh, and an only son, no less, but that is also her livelihood. As a widow, the only real way she had of earning a, a living, of having food to have on the table, of, of having money uh, to do anything with, anywhere to even live, uh, was dependent on her son being able to bring those things. Uh, because a, a widow really didn't have the, the avenues, the opportunities to do things like that. And so, her livelihood, since her husband had already passed and, and she only had the one son, was, was wrapped up in this one son who was now dead. Everything was really over uh, for this woman for her life, uh, for her potential livelihood. She was hopeless uh, in, in the state that she was in, and maybe that's something you can identify with. That maybe with, with all the stuff going on in your life or the, the things that are affecting you, you feel oppressed. You feel hopeless. Uh, like the, the situation you're in, there is absolutely no way that it will be okay. Because uh, that's what this woman was facing. That's the, the reality that the rest of her existence here on earth would just be suffering. If she could manage at all, it would be difficult, maybe even impossible. And that is what she was facing in this moment. And I love this line here that what, did, what does it say? It says, when the Lord saw her, in verse 13, his heart went out to her, and he said, don't cry. I love that. What, what must that have been like, right? To be walking along, mourning your, your livelihood, your son, your future, your hope, all gone in an instant, and Jesus comes and, and mourns with you and says, don't cry putting his hand on his shoulder, or on her shoulder maybe, just being there for her. And he places his hand on, on the, the beer that they were taking him on and, and says, I'm going to deal with this. What an, what an awesome moment. What a powerful moment for Jesus to, to be with this woman, with this, the surrounding people. And keep in mind that Jesus had his own stuff going on, right? He has a crowd that is following him, not just his uh, apostles, his disciples, but 
just a, a huge crowd of people following him wherever he was going. He, he could teach them. He could take them to all these adventures, do all this whatever. He was roaming around getting a, a posse maybe, a, just a huge, uh, you know, all these groupies just going on tour with Jesus, I guess. And man, he, he had all, all this stuff on his agenda. He had all these things that he was doing. Jesus was a busy guy and he sees this woman and he sees this moment and his heart goes out to her. And I think this tells us so much about what God is like, that he is busy. God is working in all this stuff, in all these people's lives on this planet. God is active. He's present. He's got stuff to do. He's busy, right? He's not just sitting back and watching nothing happening uh, or watching stuff happening, going down, and he's not involved. No, God is busy. And yet, just like Jesus here, when he, when he sees oppression, when he sees the oppressed going through hopelessness and an impossible future, he says, don't cry. That he, is, he, he gives pause to this moment where he could be doing a million other things, but he sets those aside, goes out of his way to be there for those types of people. And so maybe that's you right now that you're feeling hopeless, that you're connecting with this woman, that you feel like, man, my future is nothing. With all this stuff going on, man, my life is too hard. It's impossible. God sees you. And I love this line here at the end uh, that they share in verse 16. It says, a great prophet has appeared among us. They said, God has come to help his people. And you know, with the great prophet line, they didn't totally get that Jesus was who, who he really was, right? And we know that he's the son of God. In this moment, they didn't totally wrap their heads around that. But I love what they say, uh, the second part here. Um, it says, God has come to help his people. And you know, the, the original Greek uh, actually is better translated to that he sees what's happening with his people, that he's vigilant, looking at what's going on with his people ready to help and do something about it. That's an incredible phrase that, that we don't exactly have that you can wrap up in English so quickly, uh, but they, they have this phrase and that's what it means, is that God is vigilant and looking at his people, ready, looking to help. And so that's the comfort that I offer uh, for you is that we have a God filled with compassion that he is looking, he's scanning the earth for his people that are going through difficulties, that are helpless, that are hopeless, that are looking uh, for, for any type of, any scrap of hope, and maybe they feel so defeated that they're not even looking for it anymore. God is looking for those people so that he can help. So he can set aside all this other stuff that he's doing that's going on, and he can love that person. He can love you. If that's where you're at, I, I assure you, our God is full of compassion and is looking to love you, looking to extend that hand to tell you not to cry and to be there for you, no matter what you're facing. God wants to be there for you, and he's willing and is there for you. It might not always be exactly what we want, exactly what we hope for or imagine but God is assuredly there for us in our hours of need. There's not a doubt in my mind that that's true. And we see it in reality here with Jesus coming to this woman. Now, no matter where you're at, this is also a call for us to live the same way. That we need to offer that same compassion to others. Uh, you know, I think back to this, this study uh, that was done. I don't know all the details, but they... they took all these uh, men of faith from a, a bunch of different denominations. Uh, so they took like priests and, and rabbis and all this other stuff uh, going on and, and they put them to this little challenge where they, they had them teaching the lesson of the Good Samaritan uh, at, a, at a, a place that they could do the lesson at. And, and so they would go to this uh, area, give them the lesson. But on the way, they would put this, this man uh, who was supposedly impoverished uh, on the way. Uh, so as they passed by him, 
uh, this man would beg for help and would be ready to explain to them what he really needed. Uh, but they, they went throughout this study and looked at which men actually stopped to help this man. Uh, and there was no uh, common factor in terms of denomination, no common factor in terms of anything except for how late the people were to giving their own lesson. And it, it was so funny because the lesson was literally about the Good Samaritan, how important it is to stop and help that person that really desperately needs it. And man, nobody who was running late stopped uh, to help this guy. Nobody who was on that, that mission and was like, oh man, I'm already late, they actually wouldn't stop uh, to help this man. And yet, the people that were early, the people that were uh, a lot closer to on time, they were willing to stop and help. And so I think it's important for us to realize that we miss these opportunities to actually love, to actually give compassion the way that God is if we have this conception that we're late to something important that we need to be at, right? That, that we are so much less likely to be loving if we are on this, this sort of go, go, go clock and we feel like we're behind. And so my challenge for us is to think about in your life, when are those moments that you passed by somebody who was truly in need? When are those moments that maybe you felt like, oh, I have too much stuff going on? Or maybe you feel like, oh, somebody else will take care of this, this person. Somebody else will be there for this person that desperately needs God's compassion. And choose instead to do something. Like what Jesus did here. That he didn't let uh, his time get in the way. He didn't let his busyness get in the way. He didn't just sit back and say, somebody else will take care of this woman. No, he took charge and had that compassion to actually do something about it. And so think about people in your life. Think about people that you pass by uh, on the street. Think about people that, that you know that might be in need and think, what could I do to love that person, to love those people, to be there for them in the way that God is there for all of us? Because those opportunities are out there. I mean, Jesus, as busy as he was, was willing to have that compassion on those people. And so I know maybe you're busy. May, well, I guess I don't know. Maybe you're busy. Maybe you've got stuff going on. Or maybe you're just nervous uh, about uh, going out of your way in that fashion. Or maybe you're scared of what might happen or maybe lazy. Uh, I, I know that for me, it tends to just be out of a laziness, that I'm not even looking for people that I can have compassion on. And so no matter where you're at, my challenge for you, have that compassion and prove it, demonstrate it by the way that you love those people. Because we have a culture, a world of people that says, you know what, somebody else will help that. Somebody else will, will love that person. Somebody else will have compassion on that person. I don't need to go out of my way to do it. The reality is everybody says that. And then nobody actually helps the people. And so we need to be those people that really embrace what it is to live like Jesus and have that compassion. And so with this all in mind, we come back to remembering that God loves us. That God has this incredible compassion on you and me. That he wants to bring us out of those times of feeling hopeless. And, you know, especially with all this COVID social distancing and all the, the racial tension that's going on, so many of us can feel so hopeless. And my challenge is for us to remember that God is there for us in our hopelessness. That he doesn't want us to live in that, but he wants to be the freedom, be the escape from, from this world that is trying to put us down and make us hopeless. But also that we need to look to one another and consider what, what of my brothers and sisters needs my help? Who needs my help? Who needs God's compassion and what can I do to offer it? Uh, because especially within the church, we need to be there for one another. We need to love and have that compassion and really show that we are a family if we claim to be one. Uh, so with that, we're going to pray and continue with the rest of our midweek service.
Heavenly Father, we love you so much, but it's nothing compared to how much you truly love us. Uh, so I pray that we really wrestle and remember, God, you do love us more than anything. You want for us to not be hopeless and helpless, Father, and you want to be there to, to bring us through whatever it is that we're feeling and experiencing. And remember, Father, that you are there. Uh, Father, I pray that we can have that same compassion that you have for us and that we can show it to others, uh, that we can show it within our, our family uh, here at, at Heartland Church, and that we can express it to people that are, are not members here, that, that aren't uh, in, a, in that family yet, Father, but, but that we can show them who you truly are by the way that we love. Uh, we love you, Father, uh, and I pray that we grow and understand all that that means uh, for our lives to truly love you. I pray all this in your son's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Josh. Appreciate that call just to walk in compassion and uh, really to live like Jesus lived, you know, and I love just throughout the scriptures how Jesus would take time. You know, he'd be on his way going to do something and, and he'd see a need and he would stop and meet that need. And I think it's a great call for us as disciples to have that uh, same spirit, that same heart to uh, just want to love when we're called to love. And so anyway, um, yeah, some great uh, things from Josh and we have some great things coming up as well. Uh, we're not going to have a Zoom call tonight. So um, if you're really craving the Zoom call, um, call someone in your small group or someone else in the church and you can talk to them or FaceTime them. Um, but what we will do is this Saturday we'll have another outdoor service. And, uh, of course, we'll record that, and so we'll have that on Sunday as well for anyone that can't make it Saturday. And, again, we just want to reiterate, if you're not ready to come back or you're not comfortable or, or whatever the situation, if your, your health just isn't uh, where it needs to be for that, that's totally fine. Um, don't feel guilty. That's why we're doing online as well. Uh, but for those that want to come, uh, we'll, you know, do everything we can to protect one another, keep one another safe. But we'll be here Saturday night at 7 o'clock. Uh, anything else? All right, uh, we're going to close out with a song called Praise the Lord, O My Soul.
Great night, everyone. We'll see you this weekend. Bye.